It's hot out there, but let's blow them off the line of scrimmage. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory. The New England Patriots came to Baltimore's Memorial Stadium in an angry mood. They were angry with themselves for the early defeats that jeopardized their season. They were mad at Ted Marchabrota's Colts for losing to the Lions and thus offering them little hope for the playoffs. At game time, Chuck Fairbank's team realized that with Miami's victory over the Bills, there would be no second season. So the only incentive in playing this game hard and tough would lie in an emotion called revenge. If they could defeat Baltimore for the second time this year, they would topple Baltimore from the playoffs. Their motives simply being, if we can't go, then they won't either. The Colts, on the other hand, knew that victory today meant a third straight AFC Eastern Championship and redemption from three straight weeks of shoddy play that almost capsized their balmy cruise to the playoffs. With everyone thusly motivated, the atmosphere was as intense as a title game as New England met Baltimore in the game of the week. When the two teams met on October 23rd, New England beat Baltimore 17-3, held them to 86 yards in offense, and knocked them from the unbeaten rights. Normally, the Patriots are a conservative team. But wanting victory with a vengeance, New England opened up their attack from the opening whistle. Still, their strength resides in running back Sam Cunningham and number 44, Don Calhoun, and the blocking of their 265-pound pulling guard, John Hanna, number 73. The Colts, even with the irrepressible Burt Jones, have been just as basic on offense this season. They have relied primarily on the short pass and the varied skills of their premier running back, Lydell Mitchell, number 26, the AFC's leading receiver and third-ranked rusher. Between Mitchell and teammate Don McCauley, number 23, Baltimore has produced 111 receptions and over 1,000 yards from their setbacks. The first concerted drive of the game was launched late in the first quarter by the New England Patriots. Number 81, all-pro tight end Russ Francis was playing with bruised ribs, but his presence has been such a vital factor in the success of New England's attack this season that quarterback Steve Grogan often forces passes to him in desperate situations. Patriots cross midfield on a Grogan connection to stellar rookie Stanley Morgan, number 86. And behind, rock them back on their heels blocking and the no-nonsense running of Calhoun, New England plowed toward a certain score. Wary of Grogan's running ability, Cole cornerbacks like number 43, Norm Thompson, hug tight to the line of scrimmage. The game's first score came on a rollout pass by Grogan to a wide open Russ Francis. The touchdown gave New England a 7 0 lead, and another look at the score reveals that Francis, number 81, simply lost his imposing 6'6, 240 pound body in a traffic jam, then hid in the end zone. The Colts offense, so versatile, well-conceived, and potentially explosive, has been dreadfully flat in recent weeks, and they needed the spark to turn the corner. Facing them was the number one ranked defense in the AFC, a unit that leads the NFL in quarterback sacks.
With New England wary of Jones' propensity for passing short to his setbacks, the deep middle ranges of their zone opened up nicely for tight end Raymond Chester, number 87. Following in the wake of destroyer size guard, Ken Huff, number 62, Lydell Mitchell ran Baltimore within sight of a score. The Colts' drive faltered when Patriot linebacker Steve Nelson, number 57, saw no one to cover in his area of responsibility. This freed him to penetrate and pulverize Burt Jones. With a third and 16 from the Patriot 25, Lydell Mitchell pulled his disappearing act and almost pulled out a first down. Mitchell's effort fell two yards short and Baltimore settled for a field goal that made the score seven to three. Late in the first half, New England marched downfield to the beat of Sam Cunningham, number 39. Cunningham gained 41 yards on the drive, but the key play came on a pass to Darrell Stingley, number 84. Stingley dropped a certain six-pointer, but on the play, the Colts were called for interference, and instead of an incomplete pass, it was first and goal Patriots at the one. From there, Grogan scored, and New England was up by 11 points, 14 to 3. With 24 seconds remaining in the half, Burt Jones suddenly found his touch. On two hummers to Freddie Scott, number 86, Jones moved Baltimore swiftly across the 50. Although time ran out on the Colts, the stunning suddenness with which Jones whistled Baltimore downfield boded well for them in the final 30 minutes. They were a drowning team, and it appeared Burt Jones held the lifeline to a championship. While New England ran on adrenaline in the first half, they sprinted out in the third quarter on the legs of rookie return specialist Raymond Claiborne, number 26. Claiborne's 101-yard return was his third touchdown of the season and gave New England a heady 21 to three advantage. The bulge seemed so great that the Patriots could afford to gloat and Tim Fox mimicked the cold cheer. C, O, L, T, S, Colt. There seemed to be no doubt that on this dark night in Baltimore, the Patriots were number one. And as Mel Lunsford vividly pointed out, if there were any skeptics, all you had to do was look at the scoreboard. Now seemed a good time for Baltimore to quit and toss in their horseshoes for this lost season. Burt Jones, however, had other ideas, and by sheer force of his will and skill, the Colts resolutely fought back. The Colts' first touchdown resulted from a Jones fastball to Glenn Doughty, number 35, on a square out. Doughty's score cut the Patriot lead to a more manageable 11 points, 21 to 10. 
And a second angle reveals that New England cornerback Bob Howard, number 24, showed a step too late to deny the wide receiver the touchdown. Two and a half minutes into the new half, both teams had scored, and although the Colts were no better off than when they had gone into the locker room, at least they had offset Claiborne's sudden six. Dowdy's quick touchdown seemed to revive the Colts. The Patriots would soon find the Colts almost impenetrable. After adding a field goal to lead 24 to 10 in the third quarter, New England got one first down for the remainder of the game and gained a paltry 29 yards against the sack pack. Number 63, Mike Barnes, is publicly probably the least known of the pack, but the 6'6", 260-pounder from the University of Miami is quietly making his mark and this year was selected to play in the Pro Bowl. Barnes, Fred Cook, John Dutton, number 78, and number 76, Joe Ehrman, form one of the youngest and yet most experienced rush lines in the NFL. Barnes and Ehrman are fifth-year players, while Cook and Dutton are in their fourth season. And with the exception of Barnes, all have been starters since they put on Baltimore suits. With the Patriots completely stifled and Baltimore trailing 24 to 10 with 18 minutes left, the burden shifted to Burt Jones and the cold offense. They simply had to wake up or forget the playoffs. But a blitz by number 57, Steve Nelson, had Baltimore moving eight yards in the wrong direction. But then with shocking suddenness, Jones beat a safety blitz and Baltimore quickly moved 78 yards in the right direction. For tight end Raymond Chester, the 78-yard reception was the longest in his eight-year career. But more important, it was the first time in weeks Jones had struck for the bomb. The long ball has been missing from Baltimore's arsenal throughout a month-long swoon that has seen them reach the brink of playoff extinction. But when Jones hit Chester for 78, the entire city of Baltimore woke up only to take another nap when New England blocked the extra point that left Baltimore behind 24 to 16 going into the fourth quarter. A quarter in which the Colts would find out what kind of team they are. Now all the Colts began making big plays. The first coming 30 seconds into the fourth quarter when Norm Thompson intercepted a Grogan pass and carried it into Patriot territory. Looking at the play from ground level reveals that Grogan got good protection, but overthrew Darrell Stingley and Thompson was waiting. Thompson returned the interception to the New England 46, where Jones caught the Patriots in another blitz. Looking for his third sack of the game, number 57 Steve Nelson took himself out of the middle of the Patriot defense, and Jones went straight up the gut for 22 yards. Though Jones had turned a potential drive-damaging sack into a big play later in the cold march goalward, he was not so lucky, as New England blitzed again, and this time they got him. But the Colts now began to get an incredible string of breaks. On the play, the Patriots were detected offside, and again kept alive after a potential sacking, Jones took advantage. Jones' dart to Freddie Scott brought the Colts closer, and a repeat shows that Jones was looking for Scott all the way. After a 360-degree turn on a play fake, Jones focused on his target. 
If Scott looks less than ecstatic, it's because Baltimore still trailed 24 to 23. But 12 minutes remained, and with two touchdown passes in six and a half minutes, Jones had rallied the Colts back into the game. With the Colt defense continuing to make the Pats look pitiful, Baltimore was very much alive. But if they were going to complete their comeback, it was not going to be easy. With just under nine minutes to go, Mike Patrick dropped a putt on the one-yard line, and Baltimore had 99 yards of coming back to do. Recent criticism of the Colts has been their change from the howitzer to the pop gun passes of Jones to his running backs. Jones is at his best when he is executing a daring game plan. And after a run gave Baltimore a little more breathing room, Jones was at his daring best, retreating into the end zone, pump faking and letting fly. Fifty-seven yards downrange, Glenn Doughty hauled in Jones at his best. And Baltimore began a playbook perfect drive that would see them convert four third down and must situations. March 99 yards in six minutes and get three breaks. First break came when Jones missed Lydell Mitchell on a third and six from the Patriot 35, but got a first down on a defensive holding penalty. Raymond Claiborne did not like the call. Next, Jones faced the second and ten, but could find no one open, and when he went down, Baltimore was in a third and eleven situation. Facing his second crucial third down play, Jones hit Mitchell, and the Colts were on the Patriot 13. The Colts were within winning field goal range, but were destined to get a touchdown. Critical third down number three arrived when Jones missed Doughty slanting into the end zone. Doughty cried foul, but there was no flag, so Jones and Doughty tried it until they got it right which they did on a third and eight from the New England 11. Number 24, Bob Howard, did not like the call. The Colts had a second big break, and lest anyone think that the luck had run out of those horseshoes on their hats, up popped the biggest break of all when Jones and his backs missed connections, and Jones lost the ball when hit by Steve Zabel. But officials ruled it was not a fumble. Sam Hunt, number 50, absolutely hated the call. The Colts had now gone 96 yards, gotten three breaks, and converted three third down plays. Fittingly, when a fourth third down call came up, the Colts went in for the go-ahead score. The citizens of Crab Cake Corners brought the house down as Don McCauley's three-yard run gave Baltimore a 30-24 lead, their first lead in the game with less than three minutes to go. Still over two and a half minutes remain. Enough time for New England to mount a counter advance and at least one Colt couldn't watch. But when he did, he liked what he saw. For what he saw was Norm Thompson's second clutch interception that all but put Baltimore over the top.
Colts now had only to run out the clock and they would be AFC East Division champs. On the sidelines, a very emotional Ted Barchabrota was caught up in the electricity of the moment. One more bit of business remained, the removal of the goat horns from Roosevelt Leak's head. His 39-yard run on a third and two possession play enabled the Colts to finish off the clock and was a big play for a man who needed one. In two straight games, Leak's had fumbled away Colt touchdowns, but for Leak's and his Colt teammates, their 1977 story had a happy ending. Jones' three touchdown passes and the Colts' 483 yards total offense against the good Patriot defense returned Baltimore to its customary big play status. But more important, with a thrilling 30-24 comeback victory, Baltimore soars into the playoffs on an emotional high. Ted Marchabrota summed it up best. It's a tribute to the guys who came from so far behind. It's the greatest comeback I can think of in a game so meaningful. For the 1977 Colts, a supreme irony was...